Luke chapter 15, verse 1. Let's stand for the reading of the word. Luke 15, verse 1. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Father, we're thankful for the word of God. We're thankful for the people of God and for the songs of Zion that we have heard this morning. Thank you for your divine presence we have felt in this service. O oh God, meditating upon the truths that in these songs brought to our heart, Lord, thankfulness and a sense of unworthiness of what Jesus has done for us. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to give you glory this morning. Help us to preach your word, speak the mind of God. Oh, Lord, declare the gospel of Jesus Christ under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Lord, we'll give you the praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I'd like to speak to you this morning from this parable, and I want to preach on the Savior and the sinner. The parable of the shepherd seeking the lost sheep illustrated the attitude of God towards sinners. And in this parable, Jesus was illustrating uh, or contrasting the attitude of the Pharisees with that of the Lord. The Pharisees were criticizing Jesus for receiving sinners and eating with them. And Jesus illustrated with this parable that his attitude towards sinners was a reflection of the attitude of heaven towards sinners. In other words, Jesus' attitude was in harmony with the attitude of heaven towards sinners. This parable includes a shepherd who notes at the end of the day that one of his fold is missing. And he leaves the ninety-nine in the wilderness and he goes back, retracing his steps to try to find that lost sheep. Now, in this parable, the shepherd is Jesus and the lost sheep is the sinner. And I'm preaching to you about the Savior and the sinner. And I have three divisions to my message. One is the Savior's sorrow. Number two is the Savior's journey. And number three is the Savior's joy. I want to talk first of all about the Savior's sorrow. The Savior's sorrow resulted from his discovery of a missing soul. His eyes swept the span of time. He saw every individual soul wandering toward destruction. And in the midst of multiplied millions of people, Jesus could distinguish individuals. The whole race was lost. But he saw everyone distinctly and grieved over every individual that was lost. In Isaiah 53 and 6 says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid upon Jesus the iniquity of us all. 
the Savior sorrowed because he saw us lost. Every one, every individual, one sheep lost. But that was every one of us. Every soul that ever lived has been born into this world with a sin nature. And we all turn to our own way. That lost sheep was every sinner that ever lived. The Savior sorrowed because of the abject condition of the sinner. He is said to be lost. You notice in my text in verse 4, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost? This is the condition of the sinner. He is said to be lost. What is he lost from? Well, he's lost from the Savior. He's cut off from Jesus by his sin. He cannot have fellowship with the Son of God. He is he's cut off from divine fellowship. He wanders farther and farther from God. Every day of his life, he's wandering farther and farther away from the shepherd. He's lost to Jesus. And he's lost to the fellowship of the saints of God. He's alone in a cruel world. It seems that Jesus is emphasizing in this parable and in other parables the loneliness of the sinner. The prodigal son winds up in the swines, feeding swine, alone in the world, cut off from friends, away from father's house, Alone in the world. And Jesus is emphasizing the loneliness of the sinner. That there's something inside of the sinner that nothing can satisfy. A loneliness, a void in his life. And in, in being surrounded by people doesn't satisfy that loneliness. Because only God can fill that void in a person's life. He is alone in the world without Christ and without the people of God. He cannot find any satisfaction in the world. He's lost. He's lost from Christ. He's lost from the people of God. And he's lost without direction. He wanders aimlessly. He has no sense of direction. He wanders aimlessly, trying to find a reason to live, trying to make sense out of life, trying to find some significance in living. He's lost. He's lost. He's lost. That's the sorrow of the Savior. The sinner is lost. The sinner's every man, every man lost from Jesus. That is the sheep that went astray. Every man lost from Jesus. He's every white man, every black man, every brown man that's lost from Jesus. He's a Muslim. He's a Hindu. He's a Buddhist. He's an atheist. He's a every grandfather, every grandmother. Every father, every mother, every son, every daughter that's lost from Jesus, that is that sheep that went astray. He's a, he's a Chinese. He's an Arab. He's a European. He's an American. He's a Jew. Everyone that is lost from Jesus, the sinner, is that gambler, that murderer, that adulterer, that pedophile, that homosexual, that blasphemer, that Sabbath breaker, that polygamist. He is the abortionist. He's the liar. He's the robber of God. He's the drunk. He's the transsexual. He's the despiser of parents. That's that sheep that got lost. The sinner is every Baptist, every Presbyterian, 
every Methodist, every holiness, every Pentecostal that's absent from Jesus, that's that sheep that got lost. Every sinner contributes to the sorrow of the Savior. It don't matter where they come from, what their religion is, what color is their skin. Every sinner contributes to the sorrow of the Savior. And I will tell you, sinner, if you're here this morning, you may not miss Jesus. But he misses you. You may not miss him, but he misses you. He noticed you're gone. You're gone. And your condition is a catastrophe begun. And he knows that. We have a record of Jesus weeping over sinners. As he made his way to Jerusalem to be crucified, he wept over Jerusalem. He saw the ultimate end of their rebellion. And and their impending calamity made the Savior cry. Jesus wept over sinners. Sinner, it is your perilous position. That brings sorrow to the Savior. Secondly, I want to talk about the Savior's journey. The love of the Savior for the sinner compelled him to try to save that sinner from destruction. Oh my. It brought him off his throne in heaven. This shepherd in this text. He went after that one which was lost. He left the 99. He went after that which was lost. Jesus was moved with compassion for sinners. And he undertook a journey, a long journey, an infinite journey for their salvation. He, according to Paul in Philippians 2, Jesus being in the form of God, emptied himself of the privileges of deity and submitted to experience earth's sorrows, even to experience the shamefulness of a death on the cross. The writer in Hebrews tells us that Jesus did not stop at the level of angels, but he made a journey on down past the level of angels took on him the nature of a man. His journey was a long journey from the throne of heaven to the cross of Calvary. He descended a long ways to rescue that sheep that was lost. It took him to a shameful cross. He explained his reason. For undertaking this long journey in Luke chapter 19 and verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. This is the reason for that infinite journey. From the throne of heaven to an old rugged cross. The Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. On this mission Sunday... I want to read to you the story of the first missionary. So you're going to leave. Yes, Father, I've got to preach to them. They need the good news so badly I have to go. It'll be so different for you, son. You may not like it. They are not like us. I know, Father. You know you have to live with them. You'll have to eat their food. You'll have to speak their language. You'll have to share their joys and their sorrows. Their problems and their pains. I know, Father. And I'm prepared for it. And the situation there is not good. There's a lot of political turmoil. The economy's bad. And the people are restless. They won't be receptive to spiritual things. They won't listen. 
But some will, Father. And if I do not go, what will happen to them? I know how you feel, son. I don't want any of them to be lost either. I want them all to know the truth and be saved. I want you to go, but you're my son. And I want to be sure that you know what you're doing. That you know the sacrifice you have to make. The risk that you'll be taking, the dangers involved. If you leave me, you'll be leaving home, comfort, and safety. It's your life I'm talking about. Are you, are you willing to give all that up? I'm willing, Father. Then go, son, and my love goes with you. And Jesus went. The first missionary. He went to a world he wasn't from. He went to the world, came into his own, and his own received him not. He came into a world that he made and was rejected by that world. The poet described the poignant journey of the Savior. Listen to this. But none of the ransomed ever knew how deep were the waters crossed, and how dark was the night that the Lord passed through. Ere he found his sheep that was lost. Out in the desert he heard its cry, sick and helpless and ready to die. Lord, whence are those blood drops all the way that marked out the mountain's track? They were shed for one who had gone astray. Ere the shepherd could bring him back. Lord, whence are thy hands so rent and torn? They're pierced tonight by many a thorn. The love of the Savior took him off of his throne, carried him into the deep, dark ravine of death to find a lost sinner like you and like me. It was a long journey. The Savior's journey. Finally, I want to tell you about the Savior's joy. The greatest joy of heaven is the salvation of sinners. When the shepherd found that lost sheep, he put it on his shoulders, rejoicing. He brought it home and included his friends and his neighbors. In his celebration, come, celebrate with me. I have found my sheep that was lost. I'm telling you, if you'll let Jesus get his nail-scarred hands on you, he'll save you. He'll pull you to safety. And I'll tell you, he's not going to berate you for your rebellion. He's not going to berate you for the cost of the rescue and it cost a lot to get you out but he's not going to berate you for the cost of the rescue he's reaching into sin's pit this morning he's reaching for the whoremonger he's rich reaching for the harlot he's reaching for the drug addict he's reaching for the drunkard He's stretching out nail-scarred hands to rescue that man hooked on pornography. And the person that's captivated by the casino, he's made his journey for the pervert. You hear me? I said he made his journey for the pervert and for the sodomite and for the pedophile. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ made a long journey to rescue dirty, filthy sheep that had gone astray. If you're here and you're lost without Jesus, Jesus is calling your name. And if you'll reach up as a nail-scarred hand reaching down. I remember reading about the last person rescued at Ground Zero, Janelle Guzman, 33 years old. Trapped under the rubbish of the World Trade Center. And 
for 27 hours trapped under the concrete and the rubble. She went to sleep exhausted, woke up. She could hear voices. She began to cry, scream for help. Somehow, through the rubble, she made her way up her hand through that rubble until she got her hand out in the air. And when she got her hand out in the air, she felt a hand closing over her hand. She knew somebody had found her and they rescued her. I'm telling you, from the rubble of sin, from the disaster of sin, if you'll just slip up your hand, there's a nail-scarred hand that'll slip in yours. He came a long way. He came a long way to rescue your soul. You may be afraid you're not up to the grueling journey ahead. You feel like you can't live it. You want Sister Judy to come. And there's a lot of souls that stay away from Jesus. They don't ever reach up because they're afraid. They're afraid of that grueling journey. They're afraid they can't live it. But fear not. The shepherd took that lost sheep and he picked it up and he put it on his shoulders and he carried that sheep yes, he did. all the way oh, home. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just let him carry you. That's the secret. Yes. Let him carry you. You'll make it all the way. Trusting in Him. Yes, you will. Leaning on Him. Resting yes. in Him. Yes. And you'll have a joyous journey. It won't be like the devil tells you. It'll be a joyous journey. If you just keep your mind on where you're going. And who it is that's taking you there. The one that's bearing you on his strong back. He's happy to have you. And he's rejoicing going up the way. Can you? And if you come to Jesus this morning, there'll be a news flash in heaven about your rescue and your repenting of sin. And heaven is going to have a celebration. And you can send word to Jesus or by Jesus for those people who are waiting in heaven and tell them, I'm on my way now. I'm coming home. I'm on my way. I pastored down in Georgia for five years at Galilee Holiness Church. One of the brothers in the church had a Son lived not far from the church, Kenzie Wood. Kenzie and his family had gas space heaters, and one night those space heaters poisoned their house with fumes. Sister Wood found them. They were delirious. Took them to the hospital. I went to see Kenzie, his family. I talked to him about his soul. said, Kimsey, God spared you, spared your family. You need the Lord. He was tender. He wept. He cried. I know. I need God. But when he got out, he forgot about God. Went back to his old ways. Money was on his mind. And God was pushed to the side. Years went by. Many years went by, maybe 30 years. One day, right here, I got a call from Kimsey Wood. I want to let you know, preacher, I got saved. I've got leukemia. I'm a dying man. But I've gotten saved. 
want you to pray for me. God will heal me. And Kimsey started going to the same church his mom and dad went to. Time went on. Kimsey didn't get well. He finally died of leukemia. But Kimsey is a testimony to the persistence of the Savior who sought until he found him. You don't give up too easy. Thirty years. But Jesus stayed on the trail. And thirty years later, Kimsey called and said, Preacher, I won't let you know. I got saved. I don't know. You know, I don't know all your conditions. But I know the Lord laid this on my heart. He gave it to me. Because He wants to save souls. And I want us to stand this morning. Altars are open while Sister Judy sings. Ladies to my left, men to my right. We're going to open the altars first of all. If there's a lost soul here, you don't know Jesus. I've told you about the Savior's song, about the Savior's journey, and about the Savior's joy over one soul getting right with God. One was out on the hills away, far off from the gate of gold. From the rubble of sin. You'll raise that hand to Jesus. On the There's a nail scarred hand reaching down. Bear away from the tender shepherd's care. Away from the tender shepherd's care. While we wait just a few moments here. Any lost soul among us, Lord, surrender your heart and life to Jesus. Thy ninety and nine, are they not enough for thee? Why hold out on Jesus? But the shepherd, the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Look at how Jesus loved you. Has wandered away. Is there any soul here from me? Hungry to know the Lord. Hungry to get out of the mess you're in. Hungry to be rescued. Thirsty to know the Lord. I go to the desert to find my. Dark was the night that the Lord passed through ere he found his sheep that was lost out in the desert he heard. And 
If there are any in this service, you may not be lost, but if you feel a need to pray, seek the Lord this morning. Maybe you have a need of deeper walk or you're just here with a burden of some kind in your heart. The altars are open. You're welcome to pray this morning.